So question three, and it's a spectroscopy question, which is awesome because that's what we're doing at the moment. Uh, a chemical contains carbon, nitrogen, and hydrogen in the ratio of this. So that's a ratio, so that's going to be empirical formula, C4H, hang on, nitrogen, sorry, C4H11N, because the nitrogen's in the middle, the nitrogen is 1, hydrogen's 11, that's the normal way of writing formulas. You wouldn't put the nitrogen in the middle for some random reason, they have. But anyway, here's our infrared spectrum. The table below shows which write the bond responsible for the wave numbers given. So this guy here, now I know this um, because you should know these ones pretty much straight off, but in your data booklet, your um, bonds around about 2,900 are going to be your C to H bonds. So it's C to H, and that's all you're going to write in there. Now this guy up here um, is in a range which is within a lot of other things. So your acids are in there, your alcohols, but we know our, car, our molecule doesn't contain oxygen. And you can see here, this has got like two little dips. That suggests that it's gonna be an N to H because this guy here is normally an N to H to H. So that's why you get the two little dips there. Um, so that's your answers for part A just looking at your data booklet or your knowledge of infrared spectroscopy, which isn't too much to remember after a while. Now, what is the molecular formula for the parent molecular for, for the parent molecule? Justify your answer using the mass spectrum. So here's your mass spectrum. This guy here is your base peak. Okay, that's not gonna be that. And up here is your parent ion, and that is at 70, 71, 72, 73. 73, so that means that your molar mass equals 73 grams per mole. So that means you need to have something with the empirical formula that adds up to 73. So let's work out what our empirical formula adds up to. It was C4H11N. So that means we've got uh, 12 times 4 plus 11 for our hydrogen plus 14 for our nitrogen. That equals 73, that equals our molecular formula, molar mass, I should say. So therefore our molecular formula equals C4H11N. Now it's important to know that we just want our molecular formula. We don't, don't want to know what ion caused that, so therefore it doesn't have a charge. Because it's a molecular formula and we're not asking for a, what caused the peak or what ion it is, it's just simply the molecular formula here. Justify your answer using information on the spectrum. Well, I have kind of done that here, but I haven't done it in writing. So I'm gonna say that, I'm gonna say my molecular formula is this, as the molecular ion is at 73 mass charge. So therefore, and the molecular mass, my empirical formula equals that, which equals my molar mass of 73 grams per mole that's gonna be justified enough. And you can see I'm highlighting all those things here and putting it all together. Identify the fragment that produces the base peak. Now what's our base peak? It's the highest peak in our spectrum. So that's at 30. So we wanna know what adds up to 30 grams per mole. Now, 30 grams per mole, well, um, I could have uh, C2H6 there, because that's, Remember, carbon's 12, so therefore that's going to be 24, plus 6 equals 30. Now that, I can't see it there. This here doesn't make any sense, because if I had C2H6, I wouldn't be able to continue my molecule. It would simply be all used up. So therefore I can't have that. So I'm going to have one carbon. I'm going to have, let's have a look, one carbon, so 12, plus... One nitrogen is 14, so therefore it's that's going to make sense. And then H4, and that's going to be positive because that has to add up to my um, the molar mass I'm given from my base peak. And I basically just make up things until I get to that molar mass, and then I make sure that that's possible. If I want to go through why this is not possible again, I'll quickly do that here. Um, and that's because it's C to C with uh, six H's. That could not be a fragment because it's a complete molecule. There's nowhere it can bond to something else to keep on going. So that's not possible as a fragment. Draw 
the structural formulas for two possible isomers of the chemical which are consistent with the mass spectrum and the IR spectrum. So the mass spectrum says it's going to be C4H11N and my IR spectrum says it's going to have um, this in it, All right? or at least one of these bonds, but I'm pretty sure it's going to have two of them. So I'm going to say one, the easiest way to do isomers is to say a long carbon chain, okay? So our longest carbon chain is um, four in a row. And then I'm going to have my amine group. And then to make my next isomer, I could put this here. I could go one, two, three, four, and put that there. And that is going to be my next isomer. If I wanted to draw three isomers, what I would then do is I would have the next longest chain and have a branch coming off it. And then I'll have my um, hydrogens all the way around. Hydrogens are so much fun to draw. And you'd have another isomer there. And then I could then move my functional group to this carbon and I'd have another isomer. But I only have to draw two, so therefore I'm just gonna take the simplest option, which is straight chain on the first, straight chain on the second. And that's consistent with both of those spectrums. Next question, I've got some carbon NMR. So carbon NMR is here. I've got one, two, three, so it's three environments. Three environments. Three environments for four carbons means we're gonna have some symmetry involved. Question here is complete the following table for what this environment means. And again, going back to my data double clip, I've got a chemical shift of 20. Where's my carbon stuff? Here's my carbon stuff. I'm probably gonna look, you're looking at a CH3 because that's within my chemical shift. So I'm gonna say a type of carbon is RCH3, straight from a data double clip. The next one is 50.2. 50.2, well, this is within it, it's an OH. However, I know I don't have an OH there, okay? Uh, this is 35 to 70, it's gonna have an NH2. So therefore, I'm gonna say that's gonna be an R3 bonded to a carbon bonded to an NH2. And you can see I'm copying it straight from my data booklet. Now, draw the skeletal structure for the chemical which is consistent with the IR spectrum, mass spectrum, and CNMR spectrum. All right, so I know I have a few of these um, structural formulas that are consistent with it. This one is gonna have four peaks on my carbon and a mark, because they're all different. This is also gonna have four peaks. So therefore, it's not gonna be any of these two. My next isomer is here, and this is gonna have three peaks because these two carbons are gonna be the same. So if I come back over here, I play around with it, I'm gonna draw carbon to carbon to carbon to carbon to N. All right, so that's gonna be my basic structure because what's gonna happen, I'm gonna have symmetry here. These two carbons are gonna be in the same environment. They're both alkyls as well, so therefore that's why you get a larger peak here. So therefore, my skeletal structure will be carbon to carbon, then off to carbon, and then that's gonna go down to NH2. Or, actually no, do I do that for skeletal structure? I think I'm gonna go N to NH2. I think I'm gonna go with that, because I think more likely that you're gonna condense it like that for my skeletal structure. And that's my answer.